Ask the Mayor with Beatrice Mayor Bob Morgan, who is uh, beyond dedicated. We weren't sure if we were going to do this by <laughs> phone or <laughs> you coming in today. It's a little rough out there today. You know, it, it is, but, you know, I think, you know, and the years we've been around, it, 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 it could, it's been a lot worse. Yeah, yeah um, we've so, had, had a few 8, yeah. 9, 10-inch snowfalls, and right. we're probably pushing pretty close to that, but uh, I guess seven's about the top we've heard, but somewhere and, in there. And, you know, the wind is not that bad, yeah. and that makes a huge difference. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, you know, I think if, if, if people don't have to be out and about, they it's a good place for them to stay home this morning. I mean, you know, yeah. when you think about it, we've got a lot of, a lot of road work to get cleaned up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yesterday, uh, speaking with Jason Moore, the street superintendent, and of course, at Board of Public Works, he detailed kind of how they handle it with the crew coming in at 11 at night, and they work, a, I think, a, what, a 16-hour stretch straight through, and Pretty that's much. and that's if the snow arrives at the right time. It kind of arrived a little later, about 2 in the morning, I think, but right. still, I imagine that was the plan to bring in that, uh, that crew. So. And, and they didn't come in quite that early last yeah. night. They mm-hmm. came in, oh, probably from around 2.30. They were on the road by 3, taking care of, of what mm-hmm. they could do it, because really, when they came in, there wasn't quite the snow that we have now. It really yeah. was snowing pretty hard between 6 and 8, so, yeah. you know, they're... They start, of course, with um, the highways. That's one of the things that I, people may or may not know. You know, Nebraska Department of Roads, uh, they, don't, uh, they don't do the highways. That's our responsibility. Um, we get a little bit of money from the state to do that, probably not enough to cover, <laughs> cover the wages that are, that are on there. And then, of course, they've been working on the residentials, or not the residentials, the, the emergency routes uh, yeah. to kind of keep those open. I would imagine once the snow, you know, starts tapering off, they'll start moving into mm-hmm. the residential area. But right now, you know, I think it's snowing pretty good. When I drove out here, they're, they'd be just basically going back over their tracks. So yeah. uh, I think, you know, they're, they're doing a great job. They always do. Uh, coming from a couple of other communities, uh, one being Lincoln, where, you know, it has to snow four to six inches before they hit the residential area. Uh, there's just a lot of issues there. So, mm-hmm. you know, when I thought about, coming down here to KWB and be on the air by 8.30, that seemed like a uh, sleep-in vacation compared to those guys that are out there in the trucks and the motor graders working hard. You so. thought like schools, we were going to call off, ask the mayor or something like that, huh? <laughs> oh, I've, I've been doing this too long to know yeah. you're not going to call it off. <laughs> hey, the thing on uh, covering highways uh, with city crews instead of the NDOT, is that in-city or does that also include the... Um, Two mile zoning, or is that just within the city? Just within the city limits. Okay. I was wondering about that. Right. I didn't know how far yeah. they yep. went out, but yeah, yeah. When I, uh, I think I woke up a couple times about one or two, and I looked outside, and it was just a, kind of a dusting, and I thought, well, did they miss this again? <laughs> well, no, I guess they did get it right. <laughs> they, this time. It, it looks like they got it right, you know, yeah. and uh, you know, I, I, you know, of course, who knows? It's the weather. Yeah. Um, the good Lord controls the weather, but it looks like we'll probably uh, see it ending here about ten thirty or eleven, and yeah. you know, then all the rest of us will, you know, being retired, I'll get my snowblower out and go to work. <laughs> well, we've been talking about this for a while. We were wondering when we were going to get the biggest one, and maybe this is it for the season. Uh, and that'd be nice. Yeah. That really would. And yeah. and just to, so just in case people are wondering, um, you know, I had a couple of communications from. Jason Moore, the, the city superintendent on streets and, and, and of course, sanitation. Mm-hmm. So we are still picking up trash commercially, residentially, and rural. So mm-hmm. um, trash pickup will still happen today. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can get out and about. Again, I think a lot of that is because there hasn't been a lot of wind. Yeah. Um, so they will be doing their normal routes. Kind of wonder how many people will be able to get that trash can to the curbside. Now, I suppose if you can't, just... Have to just hold on to it for right. the next time or whatever, but uh, right, that's yeah. that's the downside. Yeah, you know, uh, we used to talk about this uh, on occasion, and obviously, you don't want to put anybody in danger or whatever. But there are rules about clearing sidewalks too, and in, in a certain time, and I forget what the rule is, but uh, well, not not to put somebody in peril. Don't go out there when it's really deep or slick, but just. Get it done as you can, I suppose. Right, get it done as you can. I mean, the, the, the rule of thumb is you should be done within 24 hours after it quits snowing. Yeah. So if it quits snowing at noon, really by noon tomorrow, it should be pretty well taken care of. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, there's a little bit of leeway because, you know, the people that uh, move snow are going to have a lot of snow to move. And mm-hmm. if you've got somebody contracted to do your snow, you know, you're, you're going to not really do it until they get there, and, and that's okay. Yeah. Uh, 
mentioned the street crew hours they put in, uh, and it's just not the street crew. It's other utility department employees, too, which when I first came to Beatrice, I didn't re- really realize that. I thought that was an all-within-department thing, but they draw upon other people, too. They do, so, you know, yeah. and, I, and I think one of the things that is really to note is that we've got a lot of people experienced mm-hmm. in, um, you know, removing snow mm-hmm. and you know, I looked at, as I was coming by today, that the graders doing the downtown, and they are ridging the downtown this okay. morning. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, on the highway, they take two trucks, and they go and ran tandem, to, you know, so it kind of takes a lane up. But it also takes a lot of skill and a lot of paying attention to yeah. exactly, you know, where they're at. And so, you know, I think the nice thing is that the normal street people that do that, that are on the 16-hour shift, they will end. And then I think from the sanitation department and another couple of departments, They've got some good drivers with experience that will come in and start working Mm -hmm. to take care of after that. So it's kind of that secondary crew to give the other people a break. Absolutely, it does get to be a long day, sixteen hours without a without a break. Uh, Well, yeah, and and and, you know you also have that concern about them getting too tired and and just a safety for them. Yeah, it's sometimes hard to see where the curb's at if you're driving in a car, but here these people are in big trucks and they (laughs) seem to go through it like it's nothing. That's right. Yeah, uh, quite a quite a. Thing to watch early in the morning if you want to get up at three or four in the morning, <laughs> which uh, sometimes we do. But uh, but anyway, uh, things seem to be going pretty well. Traffic's still moving. You know, again, if you don't have to be out today, it's probably just best to sit tight. But, right. I would um, imagine. You know, I think there's no school today, mm-hmm. um, so you know, I think the people that uh, don't have to get to work, it's you know, at least this morning, you know, yeah. maybe take your time and. and get there safe all right bob morgan our guest on ask the mayor today we'll be back with more in a moment back on ask the mayor today with beatrice mayor bob morgan on this uh, snowy thursday i think our last count was four maybe five inches of snow so uh Probably going to get a little bit more, at least through mid-afternoon, I'm guessing, somewhere in there. So That's kind of the way it looks. Yeah, it's, it is winter, that's for sure. Um, one incident that happened here just recently, it was unfortunate, but uh, fortunately, uh, the two uh, Beatrice Fire and Rescue workers, two of the four that were in the vehicle, were injured, but not seriously. Had kind of a mishap with a fire and rescue ambulance in Lincoln transporting a patient to a facility there. It's kind of one of these things that you don't like to see happen, but accidents do occur, and it uh, seems like everybody's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, that's the worst of it. You're, you know, you're, you're a patient being transported to mm-hmm. uh, a Lincoln hospital, and the next thing you know, you have uh, somebody that hits the ambulance, and uh, mm-hmm. you ended up, uh, you know, transferred to another ambulance, and two of our, our, our firefighter paramedics um, were were let, taken to I, I believe Brian West and uh, mm-hmm. were checked out mm-hmm. and uh, there was no serious injuries for our two employees. You know I think typically an accident like that they're probably going to have some soreness yeah. uh, of course, but we're happy and glad that uh, as far as we know everybody at least is okay. I think there was a crew of four if I remember right in the truck I, at the time. I think so. Like three or four or something. I like think so. That, but that was. Uh, I don't can't remember if you were on the council when it happened, but there was another ambulance accident in town. I think several years ago. I want to say at maybe Seventh and Court or somewhere in somewhere there. Somewhere in there, yeah. So it's kind of like when you see them out, make sure you're paying attention. I I'm, I don't know all the circumstances in terms of you know overhead lights or warning lights on or things like that, but uh, right. always steer clear of them because they have a job to do. So right, you know, as the old saying goes, pull over to the right and stop. Yeah. Uh, let them get through. Uh, I think those lights and sirens, from my understanding, were on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do think it happened Sunday morning. Yeah, I think um, right before 8 or something. Yeah, like so, there, you know, it could have been some impairment by the sun, by the other driver. We, mm-hmm. we don't really know. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that, to, to pay attention. And, and uh, when you hear those sirens, you always kind of look around and go, where are they? And maybe it's time to pull over and yeah. to the right. So yeah. but you want to do it safely. You don't want to also cause another accident. That's true. Speaking with uh, Fire Chief Brian Dakey on Monday, he was saying it had a few struggles with other ambulance units as far as repairs. And now you got this one, which, of course, is at least the engine part is totaled. But uh, where do you go from here, I guess, on replacement of this, this one? Well, um, you know, we will... It, it, you know, it's it's at, I guess, the ambulance repair and sales <laughs> shop, and I think they're analyzing a couple of options for us. I mean, 
One could be if the box where the patient goes is in good shape, you know, you maybe be able to get by with moving that over to a chassis of a mm-hmm. uh, of of the front the, the uh, an ambulance that's in good shape. Uh, it might be a situation where it leases. Um, you know, I, we know that the insurance. Some insurance will kick in to help pay for that, but as we all know, that's not going to be probably instantaneous. Yeah. So we're working on the options uh, on that. I think the other thing to think about, too, is, you know, you're right. We have one ambulance down with a transmission issue. And with the supply chain, sometimes the parts aren't readily available. So, <laughs> you know, we do have other ambulances, and the ambulance service will not be impaired. But, you know, we want to make sure we get as quickly as possible, get in the best shape possible. Yeah, a lot of things. It's kind of one of those perfect bad storms with the, you know, delivery of just parts or vehicles and things like that. The last, what, couple of years, not just fire trucks and things, but utility vehicles, oh. police cars, you name it. It's been tough to get shipment at times. It is. I mean, you kind of hold your breath even as a, you know, a citizen. If, you know, you all of a sudden wake up one morning, you see oil underneath your car, you're going, oh, my gosh, I got to take it in. <laughs> you know, and then once you take it in, you you know, it could be that. You know, it could be a day fix, Mm -hmm. but all of a sudden the day fix turns into a week fix and you're trying to figure out how to get back and forth to work because Mm -hmm. your main vehicle's down and Mm -hmm. it's not the repair shop's fault. It's not the auto parts people Mm because I can tell you the auto parts people and the the, the shop people, they want to get those vehicles in and out as well because they've got other people coming in. And so it's really a frustrating thing for a number of people. Yeah. Well, the good thing is the workers are fine. You can always replace cars and property. That's not as important. So Absolutely. That's good. That's, so. that's very, very true. Yeah. Uh, yesterday at the uh, Board of Public Works meeting, kind of a short meeting, didn't have a lot of items on there, but one of the things was forwarding a contractor payment on the uh, uh, water line transmission project. Pretty pricey item of some 700000 no, wait, was oh. it? We, got, there. we actually have two. Two, okay. Two that'll be, uh, one is um, the bill is kind of separated into material cost mm-hmm. as we move forward and work on the SRF projects, which basically uh, it's for, you know, the water transmission line coming into Beatrice. It's it's also going to replace some water mains, mm-hmm. uh, particularly in the downtown area that have been there mm-hmm. almost from inception. I think there was a generator in that particular project of all. And the SRF loan really was a loan that uh, I think came from the state, Mm -hmm. and we got that loan at 0% interest. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, we're doing a lot of work for, you know, as we pay as we go with no interest, which is good. These happen to be for, uh, there's one for 1,328,000 and some change. That one is for just the material costs that come with that transmission line and some other things from the electrical department, the water department, and the WPC department. And then uh, Judd Brothers is doing the construction work. And so the labor piece um, for now is $745,307 and some change. So you'll see those two resolutions on the agenda items to be paid. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the good news is uh, with the foresight of, of... you know, Mayor Worth and, and the past council, we put ourselves in a good position with that SRF loan yeah. to do a lot of work uh, at a much greater reduced rate. Yeah, if you had to finance that now with where interest rates are going, uh, I don't know where they would land on a project like this with that much work, but it would be a lot more than 0%. <laughs> you know, it really would. When you think what's happened over, what, the course of the 2022 year with the rise of, of the interest prime, mm-hmm. you know, we're probably looking at that 3 4 5%. Yeah. And so over the cost of that loan over that year, that would be a significant amount to the city. Anything more on the timing of the uh, downtown water main replacement work if that I kind of understood before that that would kind of be accomplished maybe in phases or whatever but uh, is there right. any kind of thought as to when that will start or about how long that will take or? well i don't think i've had an update on that but i think you know we'll be started really pretty soon mm-hmm. um, i don't i think it's a long don't quote me if i'm wrong but i think it's my phone's going off <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in that, you know, it's not going to impede traffic a lot. Yeah. Uh, but we'll have to get started pretty soon. I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a good time to take a break with my okay. phone because I forgot I put it on uh, mute. So <laughs> I think I know who's probably calling too. But <laughs> All right. Sounds good. <laughs> we'll have more on Ask the Mayor in a moment. 
Back to uh, wrap up Ask the Mayor today with Beatrice Mayor Bob Morgan and uh, a couple of things to touch on here today. Uh, any kind of update on the Traffic Committee's consideration of the UTV, ATV issue at this point? I think the Traffic Committee has uh, has met once. I think mm-hmm. they're going to ask us some you know, they've done some research. I know there's some information that they looked at from different communities, and some are first-class communities. I think that's mm-hmm. one of the councilmen asked, how much data do you have on first-class cities, which is 10,000 people or more, mm-hmm. versus the smaller communities. Yeah. Um, I think there's still going to be a good discussion that will be had, and I'm, that might be on the agenda Monday night. Um, you know, there's a difference uh, in those communities between what's done with ATVs and UTVs. Those are somewhat separated out by a couple of the communities. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think you know safety is always the driving factor in all of those, and so I think there's still room for some discussion before anything formally gets decided. Yeah. Since it's been a few days since you first discussed it, have you personally gotten any feedback from residents about whether or not this is a good idea or maybe shouldn't go this direction? I've had a couple. I mean, I really haven't had a lot. Um, And, you know, I guess I would urge, like I I did on 7th and 8th Street, reach out to your council members um, Mm -hmm. of your ward. I think it's important to hear from everybody. I basically heard from two people, and and I think they had the same concerns that – a couple of councilmen had with with the fear of uh, safety, yeah. and you know, they can move quickly, and you know they, you know, both were concerned that if you know a UTV ATV meets a car, uh, usually the car wins, as, as was mm-hmm. one councilman had said, and, mm-hmm. and so, you know, I think there's those two people have some some concerns, and so, you know, we'll share those concerns on. Uh, Monday night with the group and let the con- the conversation continue. Uh, you know the the good thing about it is is I think that you know it's an item that was important to some people to have on the agenda, and I think that you know we're having at least that discussion because you know whatever whatever the in- what, however it ends up, you know at least people will know why the decision yeah. was made rather than just saying a quick no. Okay. A uh, couple of projects coming up uh, in this construction season, and I think uh, they're either under bid or uh, under the bidding process now, or bids have been received. One is an uh, alley reconstruction project between 8th and 9th between Court and Market. Done a few of these as you were on the council to kind of upgrade. I know they get to be in kind of bad shape because of drainage. Uh, so this is kind of what, continuing that program? Continuing that program. You know, alleys always are hard hit with, you know, drainage yeah um you know maybe not a lot this year but you've got the freezing <laughs> and the thawing yeah. you know today there'll be some you know it, they just wear out mm-hmm. and so we have to continue to try to make sure we get those accomplished several years ago and i don't remember how long it might have been five six seven years i'm guessing uh it used to be you could not as a through traffic vehicle go use an alley it was only for like access to a business or delivery but now in town, you you can take an alley as a regular motorist and go through. I know it's probably not encouraged, but I think that change was made. Has that worked out at all, or have, have you seen any problems with that? Or? Well, I, I, I haven't really seen a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I still wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, that alleyway is really meant for, uh, service to businesses mm-hmm. and that sometimes they're going to be blocked as people get shipments of goods yeah. and uh, again I think the hard part about that is speed and when you get to the end of the alley you've got that pedestrian walkway that you have to be really careful of yeah. and so you know I think if, if if people are thinking that's a shortcut I think that's not a good shortcut to yeah. take. If you do take it, don't go 30 miles an hour down the alley or whatever, because one right by the police department, too, when you come out of that alley right. uh, eastbound, you got the middle school right to the left there, so you have to be careful in a situation like that. You so, really do. Yeah. And, and so I guess, you know, at this point in time, my my, my safety hat comes on and say, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> you just won't get ticketed for it if you do go right. down the alley the way it, the changes. Um, one of the projects understand you'll accomplish this year is the uh, seems like every year you have kind of one big concrete reconstruction project and this year it's going to be uh, 13th street uh, from beaver to oak if i remember right Uh, went through a little bit of study on that as to whether what was happening below the surface there and it took a little while to find out you know what do you need to do but that's in 
need of some pretty significant work. It yeah. is. It is. And, uh, yeah, they spent a lot of time engineering that particular road and surveying and, and laying it out and marking it out for us to get started this spring and summer. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it'll be a major project. You know, and again, with every project that people that live there will have to uh, work around that. Yeah. And uh, I know there's, you know, a couple of housing developments right there that uh, mm -hmm. that's their way in and out. And so yeah. uh, there'll be some some heartburn there. Yeah. Uh, but it needs to be done. And I think anybody who's traveled on that street and you see how it it kind of is yeah. falling apart, they'll understand that it really needs to get done. Oak Street will stay open, the one that goes down low there to the curve and then back up, so you'll have that way. Right, you'll still have that way. So, you know, at some point in time during that construction, though, we're, we're going to have to address that intersection mm -hmm. on all four corners where you've got yeah. the country club and, and mm -hmm. housing there. So, you know, at some point in time, you know, they'll have to be figuring out how to do that area. Yeah. Mill and Overlay still have 11th Street, kind of by the uh, what used to be the old hospital area yes. there. Yep. That's yet to yep. do. From what, what's the, the status on that one right now? Um, well, <laughs> you know, I think there was a number of, of, of construction guys that were hoping to move in and start, <laughs> start, start, start working, and, and, and today has certainly set us back. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it'll be it'll be coming up up here pretty soon. Yeah. Okay. So look for that, and then along with the regular armor coating work that's done, I think there's probably six or seven segments of streets there, there are. around that you'll do this year. Yeah. So that pretty much takes care of it. Uh, you have a city council meeting coming up Monday night. Anything of note down there? I know we talked about a few things that might be on there, but uh, yeah, I what think, are some yeah. of the major things? Uh, well, one of the things that we are doing, and I know we did it when, um, I don't know if we did it when I first came on the council, uh, but we did it when four years ago. Uh, we will start having each department head come in and do a presentation about mm -hmm. who they are and what they do. And when you think about the, the new council uh, men that we have, it's a great way not only to educate them, but also to remind us. And I mm -hmm. believe... Monday night, uh, Chief Dinky will be uh, there uh, explaining, you know, the fire department and mm -hmm. probably how, you know, how the, the the building has enhanced what they're able to do and, mm -hmm. and talk about the services that they have and how many people they have and mm -hmm. and maybe what their their strengths and weaknesses are. So, mm -hmm. um, I think you know that will be a great opportunity, and we'll just go down the line. I don't know who will be next, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think. That really gives the councilman the understanding of, of how important each you know department is and what they do. Yeah, kind of helps. To what extent does it kind of help separate the policy functions with the professional functions too? Because sometimes I think when you get a new body coming in, there's a tendency to want to. I don't want to say look over somebody's shoulder, but maybe be more involved in the operation of this department or that department. When really you want to kind of, I mean, you want to have those two things kind of separate because that's why you hire good people. Yes, exactly. That. And we have very good people in our department heads. You know, I've, I've, I've always said to a couple of, of the councilmen, our job is oversight and not operations. Mm -hmm. And you have to keep that line pretty well clear because, mm -hmm. well, I mean, a perfect example. I know nothing about running a fire department or an ambulance service, you know, but <laughs> oversight, I, you know, we, we, we have an oversight of, of that. But, mm -hmm. you know, as far as what happens there and who you hire and mm -hmm. how, you, you know, what your next fire engine looks like, that's really an important job for the okay. chief and, and the department to do. Yeah. So, and it's not like a council member or a mayor can call a department head any other time and say, hey, what's going on with this? They can oh, do they, that. They certainly can. The lines of communication have always been open to the department heads, and, and department heads are really, really good. Yeah. You know, one thing I've found kind of valuable, and I know Tobias has done this for a while, and the city staff has done it, is the uh, monthly reports they have on the website. So if you, you don't have time to, say, maybe go to a council meeting or you don't have you know, time to pay attention to this issue or that issue, you can get a pretty good summary about what's going on in the city by multi-departments, I mean, all over. You, you can. And yeah. and another thing that I think you see come out, and I looked at it when I got my, you know, I, I pay my my utility bill online, mm -hmm. but they always send, you know. That little flyer they so send So the, the little flyer <laughs> they just sent out is new. Yeah. And it is really, really awesome and full of information. So if you're mm -hmm. used to just chucking the, the bill because you've already got to figure out what is online, <laughs> open it up. Yeah. Uh, because I think Amanda did a wonderful job of putting together that folder. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that it's on, you know, just front and back. Yeah. But it really gives you a good idea of what the city's doing. 
it's kind of the Reader's Digest version of it. If you don't want to read the whole book, you can kind of just pick it out of the bill. And it did did have some good information. It so, did. Yeah. 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 I was. I opened it up, and you know, there's some things that they do because again, that's operations and not oversight. Right. But I looked at that, and the first thing I thought was, "Wow, this is really, really cool and well done." Yeah. And Facebook websites Absolutely. go a step farther. Facebook, I know, I have a lot of information on there for. People want to find out what's going on on a we do. day-to-day basis, like garbage pickup, changes in schedule, things yeah. like that. Yep. So they really can. Yeah. And you know, as far as uh, information, uh, as far as what committees and when they're meeting, yeah. you, know, you go to the, our website and you go down to committees, and then there'll be a whole list of what's happening. Yeah. Well, Bob, thanks for coming out today. We hope you can get home all right. That it hasn't snowed too many more inches. Here. Oh no, we'll <laughs> be fine. Appreciate you coming out. All right. <laughs> all right. We'll Doug, see. You. Thank you. We'll see you Monday night at the yeah. council meeting.